Nice to meet you, John. To you. Come in. Come Thank in. you. This is Will, my cameraman, or Hello. Well, director, really. It, it was obvious to me that he was, um, and he was feeling really unhappy. I mean, I saw, I mean, I seen Gary cry out of, you know, misery at being, um, and utterly lost. He wasn't really in the conversation. He was having trouble with the script he was writing, which he talked about more about not the script, but about, did you know that there was a slush fund in Panama? He was speaking more as a journalist than he was as a screenwriter. He was talking as an investigator. But John Irvin told us more about the uh, screenplay that Gary DeVore was writing, which was basically about a uh, group of rogue CIA agents robbed $40 million worth of drug money from the Panamanian Central Bank in 1989. And we don't know, quite know where Gary got that idea from. Where are we going? So this is called Sham Castle. And it's a folly, kind of building called a folly, which means that there's no substance to it. If you look behind it, you'll see nothing. It's purely there for show. And basically, this is a kind of, for me anyway, a sort of representative, if you like, of democracy in a way, or at least our democracy. The Roman Empire used gladiatorial combat, throwing Christians to the lions, all that kind of thing, to keep the population distracted. And the same thing is here now in the uh, current US empire. They use TV, media, and of course cinema. If we could prove, we could be the only people to ever demonstrate unequivocally that the United States had killed someone in the Hollywood industry purely for reasons of censorship, then it would be huge. It doesn't matter that you don't really know who Gary DeVore is, that he's not mega famous. He's famous enough for it to matter. Western intelligence agencies exist to protect their people. But it's easy to doubt the integrity of organizations that work in such a secretive manner. The Kennedys, Martin Luther King, Marilyn Monroe, Princess Diana, Dr. David Kelly, and Yasser Arafat are just a few popular examples of suspected government hits. Lesser known are the cases of writers and journalists. Gary Webb wrote the story of how US security services imported thousands of tons of crack cocaine into Los Angeles. Then in 2004, he shot himself in the head. Twice. And Michael Hastings, his journalism forced the US commander in Afghanistan to resign. After that, Hastings wrote a profile about the head of the CIA. But he passed away before it could be published. <laughs>